Welcome to Pondering Passages. I'm Kurt Austin. I'm so glad that you have joined us today. We have a special guest. Uh, Quincy Bergman has joined us from the Meeting House in uh, Canada, all the way up from Canada. He's come in and he's going to join us and he's going to be a part of our conversation about Psalm 8. Today we're pondering Psalm 8 and I cannot wait for this conversation. I love the passage. We'll see what it has to show uh, to Quincy and what it says to us as we get back together real soon. We'll see you shortly. Welcome to Pondering Passages. I am Kurt Austin. My good friend right next door to me here is Quincy Bergman. Quincy, <laughs> welcome to the show. Oh, awesome. Thanks for having me, Kurt. This is incredible. Right. Introduce yourself for those of... Uh, for, now, here's what... Uh, this is it's shameless, what we have done. We have asked you here so that the thousands of people who follow you yeah. on social media <laughs> will now come and visit Pondering Passages. <laughs> so, so tell a little bit about yourself for the two followers we have who don't know you. Yeah, no, no problem, no problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you should have checked my socials because that's one of my, I'm, I am not on socials at all. So I have oh, really? like, Oh, yeah, okay. Then we awesome. don't need you. I'm just going to get rid of you. You can go. <laughs> yeah. You can go work on your grill or whatever you need. To do. <laughs> yeah, let's cut it short. Oh man. Oh, I. We're, yeah. So I'm. I'm. My name is Quincy. As it was said earlier, I'm uh, part of a church called the Meeting House that's up in Oakville, Ontario, Canada, and uh, we are a, a multi-site, multi-parish uh, church that meets uh, online. Over the past two years, it's all been online. Um, we're just now starting to get back into person. And um, it's, what's been amazing is being able to to have our, our home, we call them home church, and that's weekly gatherings every week. So my one of my roles is to care for the home churches. And we've had to move them all virtual, which has been a challenge. And um, right off the bat, my expectations were super low on what that could accomplish <laughs> as far as like, meaningful relationship mm -hmm. or connection or anything else it's like okay so we're going to be on a screen and this i hope this is done in months because it's not gonna but i think the relationship that you and i have kurt over the past two years is a testament that um no this this can actually work and real authentic relationships can actually happen in the midst of not being able to meet each other like i feel like i know you even though we've never met uh, personally or phys physically <laughs> I know. And we had a conversation. I, I know what you're thinking about, right? Of how tall you are. <laughs> I had, <laughs> I know. I was it was late. This, like, should I go here? It was late at night. I forgive you. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he was, yeah. he yeah, was going had... to be disappointed if I was not a certain height. So no, I see, I wasn't going to be disappointed. It was, it was more like, like, so I have a picture of you of who you are. And I imagine, yeah, you know, like, it would be strange if you, you showed up to be under six feet tall or something. That would be strange. And then to find out, I'm under six feet tall. You're under six feet. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, in high school, you know, when the when the disco was a big thing, I had those big platform shoes, man. I was I was the guy, the you know, the silk shirt, the platform shoes. I was I was really going. But anyway, so so Quincy has has uh, is is our pastor. Um, has has been our pastor for the last couple of years, as we have attended the meeting house, and you know, for those of you watching this show. Attend your church. Go to your church. But if you don't have one, find the meeting house. You join it online. You watch it. And we have then been blessed to be plugged into um, BFG, a big friendly group uh, that meets on Wednesday nights for the last uh, couple of years. And that has really just been a salvation to us and uh, a, what, what's the word I want to say, a, a ladder for our our personal growth in the relationship with the Lord as we've stepped higher and higher in that. It's been fantastic. Um, yeah. And so I gave Quincy a sod, sad story about how, you know, I needed pastoral care, but then tricked him into being a part of this conversation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so let's, let's jump in this week. Uh, for those of you who've never been a part of this show before, uh, we read the same passage every day for a week, and then we come together and we talk about it. And this week we're talking about Psalm seven or Psalm eight. Sorry, messed up with Princey there. Psalm eight uh, for the choir director, a Psalm of David, 
to be accompanied by a stringed instrument. And so did you bring your guitar, Quincy? Are you all set? Ready I to go? did not. No, okay. no, I left my, no, not this Well, week. then we'll just pretend that there's a stringed instrument. So um, I guess one of the questions that uh, my friend Dave Mullins, who, uh, for those of you who are wondering where, what happened to Dave, he will be back with us very soon. Uh, but as Dave and I go into this, often the first question we have is, what do you think about this psalm as you read it? What's what stood out to you? What was it that really ministered to your heart? Uh, how did you feel about this this psalm, Quincy? Yeah, the first the first thing that popped right away was it, and which happens often with the psalms is you'll hear songs in your head, right? There are a couple hymns yeah. that are worship songs that are connected with it. So the the first line, of course, the O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, right? So that mm -hmm. if if you know if you're familiar you, with that tune, you can't help that, it. Was yeah. that it? Was it Michael W. Smith? Oh ah, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name! That's, that's the, the that's the one. But yeah, absolutely. You read it, and you and matter of fact, that's not even what the words are. I don't know if you were using a New Living Translation this week as you were reading. That's what no, I was. I was in the the NI, NIV, and then okay. I also uh, I peek at the NRSV as well. Those are my okay. two kind of favorites. Yeah, yeah. The trick was as I read verse one not to sit to read it as the song yeah because that's just that's just what here um anything else anything else that you and i can move to the next slide if there's something on the next slide that really resonated with you no we can go we can keep okay. going i think we'll end All up right. coming back but i think we'll yeah all right. Well, let's let's. Uh, so, in, as we're reading verse one and two, O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You've taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppress you. Uh, I, Anita and I were talking about this. Uh, Anita, my wife, and uh, she was mentioning she's a pediatric nurse. She loves children, and so she liked. She really honed in on verse two on this about the children and infants who tell of your strength. And she had a wonderful insight that the idea that um, the purity of a child, they're not, they're not, they're in touch with God in a way that we just don't understand. Uh, they're closer to him and can really speak truth if mm -hmm. we allow them to. And mm -hmm. uh, she loved that. Um, and, uh, and, and really, spent some time talking about that. I wondered, I wondered, uh, at verse two, just in total verse two, uh, you have taught your children and infants to tell of your strength. And I was, I was, uh, I, I don't know the verb structure here or how that, how the it's written out. Uh, is it the children who silence the enemies and all who oppose you through their words? Um, mm. or is it, is it you are silencing your own enemies and all who oppose you. Uh, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure how the dangling modifier, which mm -hmm, which one mm -hmm. was it? But I love that idea that the children can speak truth in such a way that it leaves other people quiet. Yeah. You know? um, well, it seems it, it almost seems ridiculous how far apart they are, right? When you think about God's strength and the enemies that oppose God and His strength, mm -hmm. right? So you think of these two, like. Goliaths or these, you know, these, these, uh, giants that would be battling back and forth and to think that the children and infants are the ones yeah. that are testifying to the strength of God, which is like, yeah. how does that even work? Right. There's such like, how does a child or an infant, the most defenseless and, you know, vulnerable tell of the strength silencing enemies? It just seems, it seems out of proportion. You know, um, this is this is we're on uh, Psalm eight. We've we started uh, with Psalm sixty nine uh, a couple of years ago, and we've been reading through. We got to one fifty, and we started at verse one or chapter one, Psalm one, and have moved our way through chap Psalm eight. But this is so. If you're reading one through seven, uh, this is the very first one that's actually a, a hymn of praise. This is the first one in the Psalter where we come to this hymn of praise. And one of the things is, as we're talking just about verse two, even, is I, I wonder if, uh, so you have taught them to tell of your strength. You have given them the words, I, you know, and 
it starts with this praise of your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is high, higher than the heavens and children even know about it. It's not so far removed mm -hmm. from us mm -hmm. that, that the children cannot own that as well. I mean, honestly, let's, I mean, some of the reasons we don't follow God is because our own lives have, have taken us off course, right? We, we, we don't, we are not born agnostic. We are not born atheist. We are born believing that there is something bigger than us. We experience it. You know, our parents mm -hmm. care for us. And I'm telling you right now, you've got kids of your own. The mm -hmm. first time they wrap their little hand around your finger, uh. <laughs> they are created, you know, and they have you right there. And, you know, people who, who are rough and tumble, who have children melt when their kids put their, their hands around that pinky. And that in and of itself speaks of God's amazing power that this, this thing exists, yeah. this child exists. You weep when you hold your first child, you know, you're just, and I, I, I wonder sometimes something about that. Yeah. Well, isn't that amazing, right? Like that something so weak and vulnerable can make that, you know, like you said, the rough and tumble weep. And as you're saying that, I'm like, I'm, who, who's got who wrapped around the other's finger? <laughs> <That's what laughs> Absolutely. I was thinking, right? like Absolutely. They, they've grabbed onto yours, but they've actually, they've, they've done that reversal, right? That judo swap where it's like, no, actually <laughs> you're now, you're now wrapped around their finger in a real sense, right? Like they've got that that power in their their yeah. vulnerability and weakness yeah, yeah i think beautiful. the other thing as as we continue to talk about this is that this whole this whole uh passage it it, it um points back to this majestic power of god um so you know you go from this little child that silences the enemies and now you go to the night sky you know, I mean, God, the, the, the writer of this psalm uh, was very poetic, beautiful words. Um, so verse three, uh, for those of you listening to the podcast, when I look up at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moons and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you, you should care for them. Yet you made them only a little lower than God. Some translations say the angel, right? Uh, and th then the angels, the heavenly beings, and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under your authority. We'll stop there. So, uh, so what? What'd you get? What'd you get out of this little section here, Quincy? What? Yeah. Well, it it throws back to that. Um, well, so another song comes to mind first, um, and it's uh, Israel Hotton. Uh, oh, what's the name of the? I am a friend of God. Oh yeah, you love that song. Yeah, you yeah. love that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For those of you who don't know Quincy, he loves music. He loves <laughs> music. And and for those of you who, uh, I mean, in full disclosure, I really wanted his wife to be on this show and not him <laughs> because she, yeah. she is incredibly musical, musically talented, and uh, yeah. and super. No, I, I give yeah. Quincy a hard time about that. No, but, my whole my yeah. whole family is very very musical. I'm the one who's I'm probably the least musical out of everybody. But I always say that somebody has to appreciate, right? Like it's you can yeah. have all of the the most beautiful yeah. art and the creativity, everything. But if there isn't someone to to sit and admire and appreciate, then yeah, you the are the, the perfect audience. You're the perfect audience. <laughs> That's your job. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, uh, I am a friend of God. So tell, tell me more about that. Yeah. So it just has that line at the very beginning. Who are, who am I that you are mindful of me thinking of me mm -hmm. as, as the opening line to that song. And it's just asking that question. I think as you're talking, right. The, the majesty of God, how it's, he's everywhere and he's always, and it's like, but what about like, and you think of us still. So you're looking at that kind of that juxtaposition of how big God is yet. He still, um, still cares for me. So as I was reading it, so there's, there's some, it took me back. So there was, there was an experience I had back in my, uh, I'd say my mid twenties where I was on a trip to the West coast. So I was visiting Vancouver and I'm driving along. We're going up to our hotel with some conference or something. And we're driving along and I'm partway in a conversation. And then I just stopped like in mid sentence because I was just like, my 
my breath was taken away mm. because we were passing by the mountains. We were, we'd gotten to see a mountain range. And I realized in that moment, and I was, what took my breath away was how big the mountains are, mm -hmm. how big they are. And what I realized in that moment was that I had never, ever seen anything bigger than a building. Never in my life. And that's, that sounds silly. I don't know, like, but for me, like growing up in, in city, like I've well, always been in your city. You were in your 20s. I get that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, yeah. really, I mean, a lot of people don't start traveling until they're further out and they, and they have yeah. that experience. So that's really a neat insight. Yeah. So I, so, so I was in and around Toronto in that area. So the biggest thing uh -huh. in our, in, in our understanding or world that we've seen and been in contact with would be the CN tower, right? Which is a big, big, but then you start coming around and, and you see a mountain that's, and that's a skinny little, it looks like a needle, right? Like it's, you know, a yeah. skinny base and just goes straight up. And then you get around places and it was just incredible in that moment i realized no i've never seen anything bigger than a building nothing bigger than what's been made by man right mm -hmm. that's man-made which did something it kind of like it, it it did something to my brain and like oh whoa because i it i think it put me not not just me but mankind in a place that was much bigger than what we really are wow. if you get what i'm saying yeah. so in that moment i was like no we're dealing God is big, right? And then another time when you, um, I had an opportunity to go overseas and to just be like, so we flew, uh, this, I was gone to um, Ghana, West Africa, mm -hmm. and we did a straight shot. We didn't stop in Europe. We did a straight shot from uh, JFK to Accra in Ghana. That's a which lot is of about, water. <laughs> that's a lot of water. So, <laughs> so outside of the first like, five, 10 minutes of takeoff, uh -huh, you can uh -huh. see a little bit of, you know, New York. And then the rest of the time it's water. You look two hours, fall asleep for four hours, wake up, still yeah. water, wake up. And then again, it was that, that, that right sizing of saying that this is big. Like the, the Atlantic ocean is massive. <laughs> and the one that I'm, I'm praying to spoke it into it, just, just gave a breath and all of these things came into existence. Mm -hmm. So, so, so you're trying to, you're, you're trying to get your head around it. And then that question, who am I, what are mere mortals that you should think about them and humans, human beings that you should care for them, where a little wave from this ocean that we're going over, or if you just drop me, I'm done. Like, yeah, never, there's nothing, never there's no be hope, seen right? again. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. So it brought me back. So, so reading this Psalm that this past week brought me back to those two instances of just like, just the, the vastness, the, the size of our planet and therefore how, how much bigger God is, you know, than, than, than where we are and how we, just the right sizing. So it does that thing. It shrinks you incredibly in one moment. Yeah. And then verse five, you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's wild. So here, here's the thing that I have taken away from the meeting house in the last two years. Mm. Uh, both Anita and I, as, as we've, we've attended, we have never lived into the way God created us to live. Mm. We have not lived as the saints. We've lived as the sinners who are broken and need God's grace. Fine. Yes, true. But he calls us saints. You know, Paul calls us saints. Uh, and just like this, you've made us a little lower than God. What? What? I've never lived that way. I, I, I've lived as a, I, I think there was a song as a, as a kid about, you know, a worm. You know, you're a worm. You know, uh, now this, this goes into years of therapy that I still need to have done. But as a kid, my nickname, my dad gave me the nickname of worm wow. because I was, I was squiggly. I was always moving. Around. <laughs> That's the reason, but there's so many other connotations with that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. You go, Oh yeah. And he did not mean it in the negative way, but that's, you, you, you twist things. Sure. And yet there in verse five. You crown them with glory and honor. So those of you who might be uh, listening to this, we're, there, there are going to be several blogs that are going to be posted related to this to this passage because, oh my gosh, you could spend weeks unpacking. What does it mean to be a little lower than God? What does it mean 
the fact that God in verse four, that mortals, not only does Jesus, does God think about us there, then he also cares for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, he's not just, he's not just a, it's just not just a good idea over there. He, he comes and he, he, and that's and the whole gospel story of Jesus coming and living among us and, and, and dying for us, caring for us in the ultimate way. Oh my mm -hmm. word. Anyway, it's just, yeah. this is a, and this I, is a beautiful. And I, and I love that two things, two things are, are represented in this passage and two things are true. One is the, the bigness of God. And then the the intimacy, right? So you talk about imminence and transcendence, right? As would be like a systematic theology way of explaining it. But the the bigness and the like that overlooking planet, you know, sun, moon, stars kind of thing. But uh -huh. then also that intimacy, right? Like the like I'm 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 careful enough to even spend time and teach the babes and the infants, you know, and have yeah. them represent. So there's so there's I, I think having both of those in mind at the same time keep you. It's it's um. Our friend Danielle uses that expression of right sizing ourselves, where yeah. you you don't think of yourselves so big that yeah God loves me and every, like where you you get an ego about it. Um, it gives you a sense of grounding and, and self worth and identity, of course, but it doesn't get you so big because then you realize oh in in the grand scheme of things I'm so much smaller and insignificant, right? So it yes. does both, right? It gives you that healthy respect and and uh, um, yeah, just just reverence, I guess, is the right word, so that you don't get too big for your britches. Well, then right after that, right, verse six and seven and eight, I mean, basically, he's made me a zookeeper, you know, so don't don't get too big. You know, yeah, you got a crown, you get to wear a crown and you got a little, uh, you know, glory and honor. But your your main job. Take care of the animals, take, yeah. take care of creations. And we have seen this over and over again as we've studied these Psalms. Uh, that there are two two recurring themes, and this makes sense for the original readers of this. One is the creation story is told over and over and over again in so many different ways. This is exactly the same thing here. God created the stars. He created the heavens. He created all these animals, gave uh, authority to uh, man and woman to take care of them, to name, you know, man was to name them, take care of that. Mm -hmm. Another theme, and it's not in this, uh, is the Exodus story the the story of god leading the people out and and leading them into the promised land so both of those are over and over again this is an example of the creation story where mm -hmm. we see this we see this uh the stars the moons the heavens the animals that are created and our role what is mm -hmm. it we're called to do um mm -hmm. and actually this last weekend uh jimmy on the live stream he he talked about the garden you know that the the, the the Bible the story starts with the garden and it ends with with Jesus in the garden and and uh, mm. uh, I, you know and this is this is the exact same thing. Yeah. Uh, well, it's interesting and again, you say that that, that well, yeah, I was gonna, it's interesting that you say that no. that story gets keeps getting repeated and repeated over and again. And I thought as you were talking um, that our story starts in Genesis one and Genesis two. But we, but we tend to fast forward and think that our star, story starts in Genesis 3, right? After everything just falls apart and, we, you know, all of the damage. That, yes, okay, to your point, yeah, we're, we're sinners in need of grace, absolutely. But that's not our original. Like, that's not where our story starts, right? It starts a couple chapters <laughs> previous, yeah. right, of something more, right? Something, um, yeah, zookeepers, I like that. But even, <laughs> even that... Um, even that, like re recently, it's just, it just reminded me of, um, uh, like I've been spending a lot of time Genesis 1 and 2 over the past little bit. And one of the things that's interesting, even that language, right, when you hear to have dominion or authority, yeah, um, can sometimes give us the impression of like, so we're to use these resources and, and, and use them up, right? So it's our, our right to now... They would take advantage of this thing and drain every little glass drop drip that we can get out of the thing, yeah. as opposed to um, our responsibility, right? Like we see it as a, this is a thing. It's like our, our right is to use it all up, but our responsibility and the, the, the Hebrew, as I understand it, is saying more, less about dominance and more about service, serving and protecting, right? Is the, is the, is the phrase I think most accurately translated to serve and protect the world as opposed to ring it out for anything yeah. that you can get from it. Yeah. I've been thinking about, uh, I've been thinking about, you know, if you gave me your car to take care of while you're on vacation, 
Mm-hmm. And it's my opportunity just to drive it 3,000 miles. I'm driving that thing till the wheels fall off. Or I'm going to get the oil changed. I'm going to wash it. I'm going to wax it. I'm going to take care of it so that when you come back, and it's in good shape. Now, I'm going to drive it to the grocery store and I'm going to drive it over, you know, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to use it up. I'm going to care Sorry. for it. Anything else before we close out? Um, no, this is really fun. I really like this, Kurt. So you're saying I shouldn't bring Dave back. It's just, it's just a, a Kurt and Quincy show moving forward. I get that. I, I hear that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Get the, get the pink slips uh, sorted. Right. <laughs> yeah. Know, we'll we'll have to cut his salary. Yeah. Uh, well, well, thank you so much for taking the time and talking to me about this passage. And, uh, and, uh, for those of you who are, uh, new to this, again, uh, we want to invite you to follow us on ponderingpassages.com. It's our website. Uh, there you can find the blog. You can find our, our podcasts. We can find our, our amazing testimonials, videos. amazing testimonials. I love that's my favorite part of your, of your Those are fake. They're, they're fake. They're not real yet. We haven't filled in the real testimonials. <laughs> oh, that alone. That's that alone is worth the click. Like, go just read the testimonial. That's my by far my favorite. The content is great too. Sorry, don't get me wrong. The content is good. The testimonials, yeah, excellent. Yeah, those are those are all fake. You can follow <laughs> us on Instagram, uh, YouTube. Uh, just uh, be a part of that conversation, and uh, you know you can like and follow us, or you can just um, uh, watch the show and leave a comment if you want. You know, tell us what you're thinking. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are about uh, soulmate. So. Uh, Until next time, uh, we will see you when we do uh, number nine. So start reading nine tomorrow and read every every day and then join us back here a week from then. And we'll see you then. Thanks again, Quincy. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Goodbye. But but being in spaces, like being in spaces... Where, where there is that, if it, you want to like power, power places sure. or whatever, then it's, it's something I'm, I'm, I'm sensitive to it. I don't know. I don't like it. You don't want to be part of that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I want, and, I want my ego to shine. Nobody. Else <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Everyone else needs to be yeah really humble and say less because I've got a lot of real important things to say. <laughs> so everybody just, yeah. Quiet down. See, See, that's what's going on the end right there. That's the that's the kind of stuff that we capture and we throw on the end. <laughs> Thank you. That's all we're we're always looking for one good one. That was it. Yeah.